Uh, my name is Chelsea Ferrar. I'm the Curator of Community Engagement here at the museum. And it is my honor to welcome you all to our first uh, talk in our series uh, this spring. Um, and it is a more honor to introduce uh, our two speakers today. Um, but before I do that, a couple of things that we want to um, introduce you all to as far as the space and our season. Um, first of all, uh, the University of Arizona sits on the original homelands of indigenous people who have stewarded this land since time immemorial. Aligning the university's core value of a diverse and inclusive community, it is an institutional responsibility to recognize and acknowledge the people, culture, and history that make up the wildcat community. At the institutional level, it's important to be proactive in broadening awareness throughout campus to ensure our students feel represented and valued. And again, welcome. Today's visiting artists and speakers are here in conjunction with our spring exhibition, Other Targets, that you walked right through as you came in, uh, curated by the artist Sherry Kreider. We're thrilled to have them uh, here for the first of our two engagements with the museum at campus and our wider Tucson community. Uh, tomorrow, in fact, uh, Janaya and Gabriela will be here as part of our community day, speaking more about um, Palo de Pollo, or chicken soup, uh, which is a collaborative arts-based project which is documented in our gallery um, uh, in, via film. Uh, so I hope you can come back tomorrow for that free public program, uh, which is offered tomorrow at 10 to 2, which is free. Um, I also want to take a minute to thank our sponsors who have made this exhibition and programs possible. Uh, the Edward J. Gallagher Jr. Memorial Fund, the Jack and Vivian Hansen Endowment, Afri U of A Africana Studies, the Confluence Center for Creative Inquiry, and the Commission on the Status of Women. And of course, museum members, our museum membership program also helps us fund programs such as these. So uh, if you are not a member, please think about joining if you've not done so. All right, our guest artists and speakers today are uh, Jenea Sanchez, uh, who was born and raised in Douglas, Arizona, um, in Agua Prieta, Sonora. Uh, after receiving her MFA from Arizona State University in 2011, she returned to Douglas to pursue her career as an artist and educator. She is a fellow of the National Association of Latino Arts and Cultures Leadership Institute and currently faculty at the Cochise College in the Digital Media Arts Program. Sanchez's work has been exhibited at the Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art, the Hive, the Latino Museum of History, Art and Culture, and the U.S.-Mexico War of Fence. Gabriela Munoz is an interdisciplinary artist, arts educator, and arts administrator. Her work as an artist is rooted in her experience, uh, experiences as a Latina living in the Southwest and is concerned with movements of social justice and equality. Her collaborations with local, national, and international colleagues, as well as museums and cultural organizations, have allowed her to support the development of artists and cultural bearers in the Southwest region. <coughs> Through her work at ASU, the Arts Commission, and uh, the Phoenix Art Museum, she has developed artist-centric public programs, artist grants, exhibitions, and creative partnerships. And she is a fellow of both the Intercultural Leadership Institute and the National Association of Latino Arts and Cultures Leadership Institute. Uh, please join me in welcoming Janet and Gabriel. Chelsea, and I want to thank the museum, the University of Arizona Museum of Art, for hosting us and um, showing our work on your beautiful walls and your beautiful floor. We are um, completely honored to be here. Um, I also want to thank um, Sherry Schreiber, who is the curator of uh, the Targets, and also just another shout out to the Confluence Center for Creative Inquiry for um, helping out with this, with this engagement. Um, I would like to start off by um, just pointing out uh, this image on the screen and to provide some context as far as um, Gabriela and I's relationship and where our, uh, a part of where our work um, is, provides influence. And I want to, we're going to go way back. <laughs> Gabriela and I, we met in grad school. And one of the reasons why I think um, we connected not only with our minds but with our hearts was because we were crossing paths and are leaving traces in the same areas um, in our childhood, which is in Douglas and Alapiaca, Sonora. So when Janae and I met um, in grad school, this is the kind of work that I was making. I was making these <coughs> portraits that um, were printed on paper 
And the image in the center that is sort of sticking out of the paper in that liminal space is actually a photograph of me and my brother when we were kids inside a Hamburglar <laughs> in Dallas. And so Janae and I, we were, I was showing him my work and you know, we had a studio visit, and Janae was like, wait, where is that? And I said, it's in Douglas. And we were so happy to be in this little jail in Douglas, right? Um, now, at the time, my family and I still lived in Mexico. I grew up in Chihuahua, and we actually uh, didn't immigrate until I was 13 years old. So, um, so Janae told me, I'm from Douglas. <laughs> so this is um, an example of the work that I was um, engaging with at this time. This is in 2008, and actually my first year of grad school. And I was, you know, in, at ASU in these courses, and most of the time, the only Latina, um, especially from the board. And so I found myself um, defending the, my home in many of these spaces. It was a really confusing time because I was still grappling with um, the outsider's perspective of my home. And so I created this, this piece in collaboration with my mother and my young cousin, he's uh, in college now, but he was about 10 years old at the time. And my mother took this picture of me installing fabrics that belonged to my grandmother who, who, um, who passed away when my, mom, when my mother was pregnant with me fabrics that belonged to my mother, and then new fabrics that I had just acquired. And so I was thinking about, again, living in space and how my heritage was um, interwoven in, in, this, in this frame, at which I saw the border fence as a frame, as a, as a tool to hold um, this family piece. Um, we're thinking about, or together, as, as collaborators, we're always thinking about how do we disrupt this narrative of the fence. And it was relevant then, it's been relevant for decades, and it's definitely still very important to, to us as artists and individuals who have such you know, important ties to the borderlands. Um, so something that was so moving to me when Janae talked to me about this work was that she was changing the purpose of the border <coughs> fence, of that structure, for that period of time while the, clock, the, while the clock was on it, right? So it wasn't a barrier. The, pr the primary purpose was as a substrate for that, for that performance and for that, um, for that kind of intervention into the object itself. Um, and so it's definitely something that um, I think we sort of continued in our collaborative work. Um, so this is a piece, this was our first collaboration because I was a paper maker. Um, we came down to Douglas, um, we stayed at Janae's mom, and we sort of envisioned a performance piece. This is in 2009. Um, we look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think in this piece, looking back, um, there are, there are kind of three collaborations happening. There's a, our collaboration as we sort of devise the piece. There is a second collaboration with our colleagues and friends and family who we um, made complicit as they helped us weave this piece in that space. Um, and there's a third collaboration um, with the space, right? And then, so we were thinking about how, how can we come into this space and at the time we, you know, we continue to do work on the border right now. We usually work close to the Border Patrol for permission, but this is really in a way a guerrilla intervention. We showed up with our friends and our family and this purpose. Um, so backtracking, the process began with the trip as Gabriela mentioned and we wanted to make sure that the piece um, came from the land in which it would stand and we would be able to leave it as an offering to our community so that it would be biodegradable, it wouldn't harm the landscape and it would be of the landscape. And so we harvested some yucca and just you know a few meters from the actual fence and this 
this photograph, the previous photograph, was just next to my mother's house. And so we brought all of this yucca to ASU, to the paper making station, our studios, and we underwent about a 16 hour um, paper making marathon. <laughs> So that was the formation of the sheets, and then of course, I mean, as you can see, art making is very glamorous. And <laughs> um, so the preparing of the fiber, you boil it, you put, you macerate it, and then you get pulp, and then you actually form your sheets. So the the sheet forming was 16 hours, and then. And so we we decided that um, as we were getting to know each other, I want to emphasize Gabriela and I had only known each other for about three months at, at this point. And our, the chemistry was instant, and we, we decided, I, I mean, in a conversation, that we would render each other's faces on, on the body and love each other what I needed. Um, and so it was not by coincidence, I think it was, um, it was meant to be that the the Dia de la Virgen de Guadalupe, which was December 12th, was actually um, about two weeks from the time we were going to finish um, making the actual piece. And so we decided with friends and family that we would make a day of it and, and, and install it on the, on the border fence, which looks very different as you can see right now. It's, again, this is 2009. <laughs> um, so if we go down. Uh, originally, we on our during our first trip, we had scouted the area in which we would install the piece. And about four weeks later, we encountered a soldered mesh. And so quickly, we had to change plans. We had to reset cameras um, and find another place for the intervention to take place. And the entire while well, the entire time we were being, <laughs> in a way, just or slow driving border patrols were you know, just driving through the area, witnessing the performance as well. Um, but they were actually really, I have to say that I was really freaked out because I had actually been undocumented for about probably 10 years, and I've only recently come out as having been undocumented. But um, I, ha I was a legal resident at the time, um, but my residency was conditional. And so I was actually really freaked out because I was like, oh my god, I don't want to get deported for doing this piece on the defense. So uh, like the chickens that we recently cooked, I was like, let's cross to the Mexican side. So uh, we were on the Mexican side of the fence. And then Janae's family remained on the US side of the fence so that we could collaboratively and th those choices were made just strategically. I did have family members that couldn't cross to Mexico. And so we just, we had to really strategize, okay, who can cross, who can't cross, how can we get this done? Um, another thing, um, as, as far as collaboration goes, we don't have photo, we don't have documentation of it, but if you, we can see a more detailed shot, the sheets of paper are sewed together. Gabriela and I, neither of us know how to sew. <laughs> and so Gabriela's parents stepped up to the occasion. So that was another, you know, layer of our collaboration and we were just so ecstatic that we could get this piece done on time um, and then transfer it to my family, right, that would then help us install it and complete the project. So just like many, in our many cases, projects, especially um, public art projects, um, maybe measurements aren't exact and you just have to figure out how to make it work on the fly. And so we, we had a little problem as far as the height of the piece went and we had to do some cutting on site. And so luckily <laughs> we had some tall friends and they're actually here today. <laughs> and so um, that was a nice moment. And I know Border Patrol is like, what is going on over there? <laughs> so, this was 
uh, sort of an extension of that project. We were actually um, very honored to be invited to exhibit the piece um, at the Joseph Gross Gallery, which in many ways um, sort of, um, the, the part that was really moving to me was that the, the curator felt that the, the installation, that the performance, was um, at that time, right, as a grad student, that it was worthy to, en to enter into this beautiful, like, institutional space, right? And so, uh, John Michael Warner, um, who hoisted Janae and one of the images, also curated the exhibition here at the Joseph Gross Gallery. Um, I think it was maybe, I don't know, judging by Janae's pregnancy, <laughs> maybe <laughs> eight or nine months later. <laughs> um, so my father is a welder, and together he and I welded a structure together to kind of replicate the structure of the fence. Um, we wove the piece onto the structure, and then we sewed the like, we hand sewed the sheets together so that they would it would sort of hang on itself. And then on the walls um, we installed document images documenting the the site-specific installation of the piece on the board. <coughs> so then, fast forward, four years later. So Gabriela and I took a little break, but we collaborated in other ways, in our, in our um, you know, professional capacities as teachers and as community organizers and as artists. And, and so in 2015, we, we began thinking about how do we respond to the climate, especially the co political climate in our communities. Um, and so as you know, the 2016 election was full on, and we decided we, want, we wanted to work with uh, women in Abapieta and create a wall. And so we, the photographs that are being um, exhibited right now in, in this gallery out here, um, those women inspired um, the piece that would be our, our next really significant collaboration, uh, which part of it is here today as well. And so you can see in this photograph, I am I'm with um, a group of people who live in the southern part of Alabama, and they have um, a fabricate, they fabricate um, bricks for, for building homes primarily. And so we purchased the bricks and we crossed them to Douglas. And um, it took some, you know, it took some time. We had to, um, so they had to be inspected. <laughs> it turns out you can't cross a U-Haul from Douglas into a Wapeta, into, the, into Mexico, just FYI. <laughs> um, so then I sorted out some, yeah, we moved 300 bricks about four different times. <laughs> Brick weighs about eight pounds, um, and so it had a very strong back and hamstrings that year. And so this piece um, was presented as an installation, but also as a performance uh, at Smoka in 2017 as part of as part of the Push Comes to Shove exhibition. And. This collaboration, um, gosh, it was such an amazing experiment. Um, many of you know Gabriela is a master printmaker, and I dabble in performance art and installation, and so she, she had this wonderful idea to screen print on bricks. <laughs> and then to make Conti into doing a performance with her. Um, and so, but, so the way we wanted the piece to function was we really wanted to honor the women's labor, right? So to give you a sense, the, the women wanted to sell the bricks to us at, I think, 15 cents each, right? And so um, we actually, we were fortunate we had a budget for the exhibition, and so we were able to remunerate their labor um, at a more equitable rate. Um, but we really thought about, you know, how can we disrupt? Scottsdale is, I think, they still might be the least integrated city in America. And so what does it mean for two women of color to be invited into the space and to, um, and, and to depict women of color, right? And so we thought, so the pieces are on, on Mexican soil, 
Um, there's Mexican soil currently in the gallery in the space. Um, and we were really thinking about, you know, what does it mean for um, a nation state to own land, right? If you stand at the border and it's a really windy day, you'll see the earth go back and forth across the fence, right? Like, what does that mean? Um, and then, you know, is the soil American now that it's here in the U.S.? Now that, you know, I'm, um, I have dual citizenship now. Um, is it um, is it binational because you know I own half of it and they own the other half? We were really like interested in these in sort of these questions, um, and we really wanted to um, give face to the women um, who had whose whose labor was the you know that was the product of their labor and, and of that collaboration. Um, the, so we decided to screen print, and it was a really, it was a great experiment. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we were, we committed to doing this piece, and we weren't entirely sure that it would work. Uh, but luckily, we're planning. Here we go. So I mean, you know, just asking, it's it's all about asking questions, and I think that's a, a huge part of our process. And as we're Doing this labor in the gallery, in these in this white space, you know, these walls, and um, it it made me think. And Gabriela and I talked about this often. Who owns labor, right? Especially when labor comes from another place, and what type of laborers are are accepted um, into a nation state, as, as Gabriela mentioned, and so grappling with these questions um, as we are building the wall, our own wall, we wanted to make sure that, well, we depicted the portraits um, in a way that was horizontal, because the women of Luna Pieta, they, they run a center uh, in a building that they built themselves. They built the adobe bricks, and they made it happen. Um, but they pride themselves in sharing leadership, and so the, the center is all about uh, you can come in and learn something. Um, if you want to teach something, we would love to learn from you as well. And so it's such a fluid space that not only welcomes women and children, but anybody who wants to come in and learn English, learn how to learn about permaculture in the desert, learn how to sew and knit, um, and beyond. So um, the, the structure of the fence, uh, the plan, again, was to take up space in this space. Uh, in the gallery at Smoka. So I think we constructed the piece over the course of two days. Um, I think it was two, five or six hour days. Um, we, um, we sort of started unpacking the bricks and um, installing them and the, the portraits sort of started to reveal themselves. And the whole purpose of making the performance a, par a visible part of the exhibition was really to, um, for that manual labor to be honored as part of that process. And so this is Sarah Cochran, um, one of the curators of the exhibition. Um, we invited her to help in, um, in the installation of the work. And then Julie Ganas, who was also um, instrumental in helping us with the, um, in making the work possible. And then this is what you look like in that space. We're doing pretty good because we have like a hundred images to show you today. We were invited um, to paint a mural on the border in Alaprieta as part of the Dreams Across Borders initiative, which is a program that is run out of the Douglas Mexican Consulate's office. And so they do this every year. They invite artists from Sonora and Arizona to paint murals, and it's a two-day event. And so Gabriela and I decided we would do a collaboration, and we invited some local 
artists to join us, including my little cousin, um, who, who has joined us in other projects before. And we decided we would create a palette of, of these waves of colors um, that would depict movement. And we would also render a portrait of a woman in my community. Her name is Diana Monquero. And about two weeks before this mural was painted, she, she attended an event and revealed that she was a DACA recipient. Um, and so she is the only um, woman in our, or person in our community that has revealed um, you know, this, this detail. And so we wanted to honor the fact that she came out and was public with it and, and just also her contribution. She is a librarian uh, in our community and she, she has done some wonderful things not only in Douglas and Alpeta, but, but even for the business community. Her family, um, they own businesses on both sides of the border, and so their roots run really deep. And so it was just a, a hard time for our community uh, in general to, to know that she would, they were as a family, and now we as a community, we, we were going through this, this issue that you know, it's such a national conversation, and then it really um, hit us hard, right? 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 Where uh, in our own homes or in our in our own uh, places of business, and so this was a our you know small gesture uh, as artists. We wanted to say thank you to her for 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 being brave and and allowing us to share her story through this through this piece. Um, so it was completed last year. So it took it, it took us two years, and Gabriela and I have been collaborating remotely for almost eight years. <laughs> yeah. So um, sometimes, you know, and having children. Yeah, yeah having children in between and jobs, which is like real for women artists, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was three months pregnant actually when we saw the piece at Smoker. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So this is an image taken right outside. As you can see, once again, it, this cool, very glamorous lifestyle with me. Um, this gives you a sense of the, all of the bins that you see in the back contain the, the silk screened portraits um, rendered onto bricks that you'll see outside. So it's, um, it's a, it's, I forgot actually how laborious <laughs> the process was. Um, the, the bricks, once they are deinstalled, the bricks are wrapped individually, labeled so that we can remember which brick goes to which portrait, um, and then repackaged. Um, so the honoring continues through all that work. Um, so once again, we had an amazing um, collaborators come in to the gallery and help us um, install the install the, the work. Um, yeah, even though the, the bricks are labeled and, you know, they're organized in bins, it's still a puzzle to get the portraits um, to reveal themselves. And so we were really lucky to have our friends come in and with their puzzle <laughs> solving skills. Because the portraits are double-sided, first you have to kind of decipher which portrait it is that you're looking, that you're trying to put. Is anybody able to get a snippet of this piece in the gallery? Okay, so it's a it's about a 12 minute piece, and it's a documentation of something Gabriela and I learned in this past year, well last year, the end of last year. Um, this was a, about an eight hour day, uh, and it was all condensed into this um, 12 minute video. The piece is Casa de Pollo, and Gabriela and I were thinking about traditions uh, in food preparation and some of the disconnects um, in today's culture and our ways in which we, we acquire protein. 
And so we're interested in not only asking these questions, but learning the process and thinking about what if we need to find a way to feed our family protein, right? If we are, are, are not able to buy it nicely packaged in a store. Um, and so this tradition that was was long standing for thousands of years, it was broken, right? Um, I, my mother's mother did not kill chickens for her family, but her mother did. So it was my, mom, my mother's grandmother um, who had this knowledge, and then the knowledge stopped. And so um, having this conversation with my family is just, um, I feel like it just brought us closer and just, you know, Ancestry.com, right, DNA, we were also just uh, enamored with our family stories. And so this is a way, I haven't done the DNA test yet, but this is a way to connect uh, with my ancestors, with my, with my grandmothers on my mother's side, especially. So when Janae approached me about this piece, I was like, Janae, children's are so dirty. So my family did keep chickens. I was responsible for cleaning the cages, right, because you, you, when you keep your own, um, when you tend to your own animals for food consumption, you actually, like, you, you keep them in a really clean space, you treat them really well because you want to, you want them to be fat and happy, right, so that when the time comes for that moment, for, you know, for that moment of preparation, the animal is really healthy. Um, and so I knew that we were in for it because I had never done, I had never butchered um, a chicken or a turkey, which my family kept both. They've also kept um, goats, which are really cute when they're little and really mean when they grow up. Um, we kept pigs for a little while, um, uh, but we gave those away at the point. And so I thought, okay, well we're we're in for it, but um, but let's do it. And so actually, I was pretty selfish because I wanted my child, my I have a two and a half year old, so I wanted her to do it. And when I was talking to my, I always talked to my, my folks about all of the projects and there was like, I don't get enough, what are you doing now? My mom was really excited and she's like, oh, I want to come along. And so my mom has, this was my mom's third visit across the border in the last two years since 1993. To give you a sense, right? Um, so she was really excited, and I was really excited to share this moment um, with her in that space because Douglas was actually our port of entry. So it is uh, a port of entry is the border point, the point on the border where you where you immigrate into a country. And so Douglas Aguapieta has a special significance um, to me and my family. Um, so we, um, that's my mom holding a chicken. Um, <laughs> so we were really, and my child in the background, and then my partner tagged along, and his mom was Canadian, so it was kind of knocked up. <laughs> 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 um, and the women, the same women, right, that you will see represented in the portraits. That's Rosalina on the right, and then Yehina in the center, and then um, teaching us Right, teaching us um, this really kind of beautiful, really kind of you know helpful thing to know how to do. Um, and so these are still, uh, these are still images. There's something we had a conversation because I was talking to a friend of a friend, and she said, you know, I love chicken, but the thought of the animal dying is I, I can't think about it. And I just thought, well. I mean, that's kind of, in some ways, it's kind of disrespectful, right? I'm a meat eater, and so I think it's, a, for me, right, I'll speak in the I statement, for those of you who are, vegeta who are vegetarian or make different choices, or vegan, or pescatarian, or the gamut. Um, for me, I think, as someone who eats meat, like, I think it's important to think about how much labor it goes, right, into raising an animal, and tending an animal, making sure that the animal is healthy and then in the preparation of the animal and then if you are eating caldo um, and the raising of all those vegetables and the all of the resources you have to feed the animal you have to make sure they have fresh water um, you can't go out of town for a week 
without figuring out who's going to feed your chickens and who's going to clean their pen. And so um, those were kind of the those were kind of the questions and the things that um, we were really interested in um, and exploring. I think in this piece. So this was my second time um, butchering a chicken. Um, Doña Hina had given me the lesson um, about a, a year before, and so and it was part of a, my my own research and, and project uh, associated with the portraits outside. Um, but I, I wanted to find a way to you know take it a little bit further, and, and also I thought it was when Gabriela just agreed <laughs> to to join um, this project and uh, for me it there's a lot of fear of going into new projects and it's been that way since the first time I put a piece of fabric on the fence you know there's just am I going to get in trouble am I going to faint <laughs> am I going to cry what is my what are my children going to think um, but what's my favorite part of our collaboration is we hold each other up we give each other strength um, the confidence um, and just being here. I'm terrified right now. Mm -hmm. Even as a teacher, um, there's something about giving a presentation and talking about your own work, but I wouldn't want to do it without uh, a collaborator with Gabriela. And so this was a project um, where, for me, it, it wouldn't have resonated uh, as deeply because bringing in two family stories, right? I have my family story associated with food, um, but bringing in Gabriela's family story, it just uh, completely deepens <coughs> and expands the reach. And so it's not only our family stories, we were able to learn more about the women of Gabriela's family stories and their techniques, and everybody had uh, a little bit of a different way they would, you know, cut open uh, maybe the, the heart, or what, what parts of the chicken were, were going to be saved, or thrown, or um, discarded into the garden. And so, expanding this collaboration uh, was deeply meaningful for me. Yeah, so then Eugenia was telling us about a specific way that her mom used to prepare um, just this wild um, cilantro. And so, like, the way that she, her mom would, like, prepare it. And I didn't catch this at the time because there's, there's also, like, a lot of things happening. Right? The images look really kind of composed, but the days are crazy. Like, I have my two-year-old running around like in and outside, and we're holding cameras, and we're, you know, there's a lot going on. And Viola's mom is holding the camera too. Yeah, my mom was the videographer for a portion of it. And so what I didn't realize actually until I saw the video was that Doña Eugenia was retold, my retold Uma, the story about the, the I think it's coriander in English, and that's actually my child's hand. So like she was having her, that's Uma's first time using a moncaje thing. Mm -hmm. We don't have one at home. And so I think that just that for me, the work is, yes, meant for public, but in many ways, the experience of like of <coughs> collaboration and of the work and kind of centering allows me to center myself like as a woman first and as an artist second. Um, and that's, that's really special to me. Um, because for many years, right, in grad school, um, you hear that, like, if you're a woman, right, don't have kids, you never make work again. Mm -hmm. um, and so making this type of work, I think, has been really empowering and healing. Yeah. 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 We try to find every opportunity possible to bring our family into the process. Um, it's just where we're at right now as mothers and as artists. And so um, 
our children were a part of this. Um, my son, who just walked out, he witnessed everything. And now he has a deeper understanding of where his food comes from. And so anytime he eats meat, um, we do have this you know, conversation of where it came from. And I think it slows him down. Uh, and it slows me down as well as a consumer of meat. And as Gabriela mentioned, considering that labor and that care and that expertise that goes back right, into, into thousands of family stories and generations. <laughs> so my, so Uma actually made what she called caldito in the bathtub in her little puppies, mm. like for weeks afterwards. And I'm just, I don't know, I, it made me really happy that if she decides to become a meat eater like her parents, that I hope she'll have an appreciation for, um, for that animal. <laughs> so, aside from, so, Lula Prieta Trabaja, right, the Women's Collective, um, with whom we've been collaborating, um, they have, as Janae mentioned, they have, you know, a center where the women meet, they teach each other, they have a kitchen, and they um, teach each other, different, you know, sewing techniques and, and many other things. Um, they also uh, started a, um, a, wood, a workshop, wood, carpentry workshop. studio. <laughs> And so alongside the piece, we wanted to have some sort of physical component to the video piece. Um, and the, the video piece um, is sort of, that work is um, kind of a body of work that we've started, but that is not, it's sort of in progress. Um, so we, um, we commissioned um, two tables from the, um, from the shop, and then we rendered some portraits. And in case you were wondering how we did it and wanted it, practice yourselves, we use projectors. Um, and so you can see those pieces outside as well. And um, on, the, on the second table, we decided to render um, two portraits, uh, a portrait of my mother and my child who were there, and then a portrait of Doña Rosa and my mother, who's always with us. Um, <laughs> And that's, um, that's okay, so next collaboration is uh, an extension of our work with Duvia Prieta. And we are completely honored to have received news recently that uh, we will be part of cohort one of the Melon from Realidades Fellowship, um, which is a program from the Confluence Center for Creative In Inquiry. And <laughs> and so you might recognize John Michael Warner who who lifted up today in 2009 to pad a portion of the tapis down at the fence. He's a long-time collaborator um, sitting here. And also, I just want to say that in many ways, right, the, um, so this is, was a fellowship that we applied to, and that in that pro it, to, for me, the work begins in that process, right? So the three of us were collaborating and, you know, developing the draft. We, um, Duya Creta Trabaja is an equal partner in that collaboration. It's a four-way collaboration that will be um, active participants in the program design and then the at the decision-making table of how those funds will be um, spent. And even before that, right, there were letters of recommendation that were written on our behalf. And that's part of the collaboration, right? Those are the folks that make all of, all of those folks um, make all of the work pos possible. Um, yeah. So we'll be working um, all year long, up until about October, um, in collaboration with the Villa Prieta. And some of the programming will be uh, in their space in, in Al Prieta, but also part of the funding will go towards their visas so that they, could, they will work with Douglas residents in Douglas on um, permaculture workshops. And so 
that is one component, but as Gabriela mentioned, the bulk of the program will be designed, co-designed in collaboration with all of the partners you see on the screen. Um, so funding that goes towards development and process building, I think is a wonderful thing. It's, it's the way I think funding should be <laughs> thought of. <laughs> so um, as opposed to saying, um, okay, I, you know, women of Duria Prieta, this is what we're gonna do with you guys. Here's, we have money, we have a plan. And so funding to listen, I think is um, the most wonderful thing about this, this project. Yeah, and I think it's something that we've learned from them, right? The, um, they really embody that. Um, it's really peer-to-peer. -peer. It's true peer-to-peer, -peer, right? They would never call it that. They would never say we are a horizontal, um, you know, they would never say, oh, we, we do power sharing. It is not a language that they, it's not the language, right? The theory isn't there, the practice is there, which is remarkable. Um, and I think it's something that we've been fortunate um, to learn with them, yeah. So, thank you so much for coming.